I'm Dave Ford and I'm going to show a very simple but crude technique for carrying out sports movement analysis but using the most basic of equipment and the most simplest of skills. Because There's lots of very expensive ways of doing this but that's often quite hard to learn and if you're using it with learners you might have only one or two computers with the software on and it's therefore not very easy to use as a teaching and learning tool. So what I've done here is I've created a simple PowerPoint presentation which has got a load of blank slides and then I've captured some footage using a simple compact camera. Okay, now if I'd have got a better camera, a bit better video camera, uh, the quality would be better, but for this it doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to use QuickTime. It's important I use QuickTime because what QuickTime allows me to do is it allows me to advance the video by using my cursor keys so I can move forwards one frame at a time or backwards one frame at a time. And that's important for movement analysis. So I've got my, my image. I've blown it up as big as I can. I know it makes it a bit pixelated, but, but that doesn't matter. And all I need to do is copy. So I've got my image in the starting point. Control C, copy. I'm going to go into my PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to paste. Back to QuickTime. And I'm going to advance by two frames. Copy into PowerPoint and paste. Back to QuickTime. Advance by two frames. So press the cursor key twice. Copy, Control C, into my presentation, paste, Control V. And I'd, I would repeat that. I'm just going to pause it while I finish. Okay, so I've now got a sequence of six images showing me moving my arm uh, through about 45 degrees. What I need to do now is I need to trace the position of my arm for each of those uh, shots. So I'm just going to take an arrow that I've pre-prepared, and I've gone for a yellow arrow so it's easy to see on top of my uh, dark background. So I go to the first one and I'm going to paste. And I have one end lining up with my shoulder and one end lining up with my wrist. I then go to the next slide and I paste it again but I move the end in line with the wrist. So I'm going to move my arrow. Okay, I'm going to copy it onto the next slide and paste and again move the arrow in line with the wrist. Onto the next slide, paste and move the line in line with my, my wrist. Now, if I was going to do this more seriously I would have actually drawn sort of coloured dots on my uh, wrist and my shoulder to make it a bit easier to align them um, but for the purposes of this demonstration I've just used um, basic vision. Okay so I've now got six lines on each of the uh, images. What I'm going to do is go back to the first one and I'm going to copy that arrow again and come back to, oops too far come back to my blue slide and I would paste and that one's already there so I'll leave that one so come back to the next one copy the arrow onto the blue slide and paste onto this one so it's just copy and paste so a lot of control C for copy control V for paste and what I'm doing is you'll see that you're building up a stick sort of diagram showing my movement against time. So the bigger the gaps between the lines, the faster my arm is moving, the smaller the gaps, the slower it's moving. Now that's very, very crude, but from sports analysis point of view, okay, that's quite a simple technique. It's quick, I could do it out in the field if I've got a camera and I've got a laptop with battery, I don't need to come back to the lab or the classroom. Uh, if I needed to actually work out angles, then with this here, if I just look at some basic trigonometry, if I've got a right angle triangle and I know the height of it and I know the width of it, I can then work out the angle by using the, the formula that's here. So if I come back to my diagram, let's say I wanted to work out the angle that that line is above the horizontal. I select the line, go to format. It tells me what the height of the line is. It tells me what the width of the line is. All I need to do is plug those two numbers into that equation and it will give me the angle. So it's a very simple and quick way of doing a movement analysis. I've been Dave Ford and I'm just showing a very very simple idea that you can use with lots of students at the same time without having to have lots of expensive equipment.